everybody. Welcome to Bristol Plymouth High School. I'm Dominic Damiano, joined by Gene Exum and, of course, Lucas Vicente. And on the camera work, of course, is Alex Mayo. So our, our, our sideline reporter finally made it. Thank God you didn't get hurt out there. I didn't, honestly. I was just running into traffic. You know, people can't drive around this time. Or in the state, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do is... Um, We'll go, we'll go over to Lucas. Lucas had a, Lucas had a chance to uh, <laughs> talk to the coaches. Why don't you tell us a little bit about their uh, uh, their uh, insight going into tonight's game? Well, of course, just uh, work hard for the Dallas. Uh, use fast break opportunities. Their uh, emphasis, especially from uh, Bristol Ice, is on defense. Trying to uh, score off their defensive plays, like score on the fast break. And what about uh, Bristol Plymouth? about the same thing. They, um, they've been a lot away from last, from last season by working hard, uh, staying focused, and never giving up. There you go. All right, we're about uh, five minutes away. What we're going to do is, I think, Gene, you might be able to go over and talk to the assistant coach on Bristol Plymouth, the gentleman sitting down. The gentleman sitting down, and then you want, then you want to make sure that you stay there for the introductions. And then you're going to do the sideline reporting. So I talk, so I talk to him? Right. right All right. So let's, that's what we'll do. We'll step away. We'll be right back with more right after this. Everybody, welcome back. Sorry about that. I had a little bit of directing to do there. We had a little problem with uh, uh, TJ, um, Gene Eggs, but we're going to get ready for a minute with the uh, introduction. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go right into the introduction of the teams, and we will shoot it over to the public address announcer, and I hope Gene gets over there and uh, gets there, because we're not going to get an interview with the coaches tonight. We're going to go right into the public address announcer right now. As soon as these uh, teams are done warming up. Yeah, looks like we're going to get one more. Let's see if we can get an interview. So let's slide over. Let's slide the camera over to uh, and zoom in on Gene Eggs. And he's sitting down there to the left. I don't know if you can see him. This game here? This game here. Yeah. <laughs> I just got to get a little bit more zoomed in there. If you can. Sorry to, uh, sorry to bother you guys, but I'm here with the assistant coach of BP to see what are the what are going to be the keys to success for tonight's game. What are you, your keys to success for tonight's game? Uh, great defense. I think the, the girls really uh, pressure and uh, know where the ball is at all times. I think they'll do really well. Is there anybody that you're worried about on the other end of the court? or? No, they're a pretty well-balanced team. I think everybody has to do their job and know where they are and play as a team, and, and I think the outcome should be pretty good. All right. I've seen, I've seen you guys win against Southeastern, so I have high hopes for you guys because that's, um, you guys came with a late-minute fourth-quarter push. you think that's going to happen tonight? or? I do, yeah. I think these girls really care about each other. They fight to the last whistle, and that's all we can ask. 
All right. Thank you, Coach, for your insight. And have a great game tonight. All right, so that's a nice interview there by Gene Exum. What did you get on that interview? What, what was your mindset after you heard that interview? I think the mindset was simple. So, the defense is good. Sorry, I have to that back on you guys, but I had to end it real quick. But inside is, they might do a fourth quarter push in the, um, tonight, the same thing that they did against Southeastern, so it'll be exciting to watch. All right, back to us. Yep. All right, so anyway, that's Gene Eggs. He's going to stay there so we can get the, uh, the public address notes. We're about two minutes away from this game. Bristol Plymouth, 5-5, five and five, playing out of the Mayflower Lodge Conference. Norfolk Aggie playing out of the uh, Mayflower Small Conference, 5-3, and three, right in the middle of winning their, uh, the Mayflower Small. So um, besides the fourth quarter, what do you think overall? Looking at both teams, you're a basketball guy. What do you? Th what's the first thing that comes to mind watching the girls warm up? Well, I'm a basketball guy, but not a beer guy, first off. First off. And then second off, I feel like defense is going to be a, a, a real big factor for both of the teams over here, especially towards the uh, North Fork Aggie team. They're going to be switching up between a 2-3 zone, a 3-2 zone, or a man type man. As for Bristol Plymouth, it appears as though they're going to go for it. Of course, um, there's going to be uh, a lot of pressing during the, uh, high, during the game. Yep. All right, very good. And with that, we will turn it over to the public address announcer as he interviews the starters for both teams. So we'll zoom in on the away bench first. All right, well, let's zoom in on the away bench first to the right as the girls get introduced. And let's just pin Good evening, Perfect. and welcome to tonight's game between the visiting Norfolk Aggie Rams and the home team Bristol Plymouth Lady Craftsmen. Starting lineup for Norfolk Aggie. At guard, senior number three, Emily Dudek. At guard, senior number five, Emily Leonard. Forward senior number 11, Kiki Soul. Guard senior number 15, Haley Bernardo. Center senior number 31, Zaria Codio. And the head coach for Norfolk is Lisa Garrett. Lisa Garrett, 30 years. For Bristol Plymouth. Starting at guard, freshman number four. Guard senior number 35, Amaya Marshall. And at forward sophomore number 30, Saria Dyer. And the head coach for Bristol Plymouth is Denise McGrath. Would you all please rise and remove your caps, face the flag for our national anthem.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Bristol Plymouth basketball as they take on Norfolk Aggie, the Lady Rams. Looking for Sente, I'm Dominic Damiano, joined always by the sideline reporter Gene Exum again as we get ready to give you this big game. And, and of course, the man himself on the camera is Alex Mayo. So, so we get ready. Well, uh, um, you know, we'll have, um, we'll have uh, Gene Eggs, and he'll be, he'll be um, adding insight throughout the game. So you're all set there, right? Yes, I am. All right. And by the way, um, a pre-game update. I took a round. Nobody was taking any. Nobody was taking any. There you go. All right, so here we go. And let's see. And here's the tip. Yeah, one by BP, and we're going to have a backcourt. And we're going to have a change of position just like that. And here we go, bringing that, that's Leonard. Leonard gets it over to, that's Bernardo. Back to Leonard, top of the key, carried by Ferry. She goes to her right, right tries to work a baseline inside. They ste Dyer steps in front of that, knocks that away, and Marshall will bring it up. Covered by Dudak. Just underway, we'd like to welcome everybody watching here on 4 Deep Sports Talk here on Facebook. Oh, nice play by Dudak. But Farry is there to help out. Now she'll drive all the way base on. She stops, pins it out to McGrath. McGrath, guarded by Bernardo, top of the key. She moves to her right, gets over to Marshall, the senior captain. She stops. She's going to get her for dragging her pivot foot. And we're going to have a change of possession just like that. And in comes Leonard, bringing it up. We have no score. A minute into the game. Almost a minute into the game. That's Sol. Sol gets it over to Bernardo. Back out to Sol. Bernardo again back out to Leonard. Big shot. Short. Fall up the big wind up. Won't go. Under the hole. And she follows up again. And she's fouled. And that's Codio. Codio, excuse me. She will try to make this a three-point play. The, the big center. And Codio did a good job of uh, not giving up on the play. Second chance points are very important in a ball game like this. Absolutely. Here's a shot, and she finishes a three-point play. Another thing I like to, I think is essentially important besides taking care of the ball is defensive rebounds, because without defensive rebounds, you're giving the other team a second chance of, get, of scoring on that possession. When you keep giving them the chances, the defense starts to wear down. Earlier today, uh, Lucas Vicente, myself, and Alex Mayo had a chance to watch a very good JV game came down the wire. Abby Nee scored 10 points from Norfolk Aggie. And Leah Clark scored 10 points for Bristol Plymouth. It ended up being 24-20. Now working the ball inside that to Sol. Sol's blocked by Dutton. Rebound and losing the ball. For a minute it was Leonard. She smartly worked her way out. Dudak. Now Dudak drives back to Leonard, top of the key, covered by Ferry. She goes to her left, bounce pass. Now works inside the sole with a little floater. That won't go. Rebound. The big six-one, Cudio, Cudio, excuse me. And just like that, it's five nothing, Rams. And we're going to have a reach on a push. It's going to be a push on Cudio. Her first team first. Both teams have one team foul apiece. Yeah, when you do a push in basketball, you're pretty guaranteed to get called for a foul. Absolutely. So they're giving Fario a chance to tie her, tie her uh, sneakers, her basketball shoes, I should say, right? Oh. Nah, sneakers, sneakers is fair. That's fair in Massachusetts, right? <laughs> Marshall really pushing the ball up hard. Guard hard by Dudak. Stops. Was thinking going left. Now she's going right. She looks. She looks. Stops. Keeps on going. Stops for a minute. Gets over to Ferry. Ferry almost lost the ball. Grabbed on now. She drives. Stops. Get over to Marshall. Now she's going to try to drive. Her Florida. And they're going to say she was blocked. They're going to say they lost possession. Last touched by the Rams. It will be Bristol Plymouth ball. Nine seconds on the shot clock. On the break. And as Dio with the shot, that shot's blocked by Sol. It'll stay Bristol Plymouth ball with six seconds on the shot clock. I think BP's uh, shot selection needs to get better throughout the game so far. 
Now Marshall, there's McGrath for a look, won't go. Uh, Keto, now bringing up is the point guard, Leonard, running this offense. He's thinking about Bonson, lost the ball for a minute to Bernardo. Bernardo gets it all the way over to Dudak. Dudak out to Bernardo. Sorry, almost had a steal, now back out to Dudak. Inside, little give and go, little pass. The kicks back out, there's a floater, that won't go, that was Dudak. Dudak digging us. Appears to have gone down on that play with a, a left she hand hurt. injury. Yeah, she Dyer's going out with an injury. So we're gonna have to find someone to uh, come in for her, and that is uh, still. Yeah, it comes still. They're gonna call an official timeout. And now, like you said, good, good catch there, young man. It still comes in on the inbound in the Bristol Plymouth and five nothing early in this first quarter. Now, I got a question to ask you, Dom. Oh. You know how uh, in high school, um, the, the, t the limit stations towards how many times they can call the game is five? Well, how many is it for a referee? For what? What's how, how many times can a referee call? Like, what's their limit? Um, fouls? Timeouts. Oh, that's a good question. That is an excellent question. The easy answer is zero. They can call however many times they want. True. Good that's, that's kind of supposed to be a true question. It's a good question. Got me. Marshall comes up short on that one. And the foul was on uh, Emily Dudek, I believe. Uh, that foul it was on them. Yep, her first team second. And in comes the Rams. That's Bernardo. Bernardo over to Dudak. Dudak back to Bernardo. Thinking about driving. Works it inside the sole. Sole stops. And they're going to get it for up and down. We'll have a change of possession. Under five minutes left in this first quarter. Five nothing Rams. As Bristol Plymouth is just trying to find some some rhythm here and they're playing main defense against Bristol Plymouth, the Rams are. Faria now trying to read a, a possible pick off Dutton. Dutton stops, covered by Sol. Lost the ball, blocked initially by Sol. Now Ferry recovers, going left, trying to go for pick off Dutton. Off Dutton stops, kicks in Dutton, see if Dutton tries to use her height. She floats it, Paul was blocked. And in comes Bernardo, thinking about driving all the way. And then I call up and McGrath took a hard foul. But time out. Time out. Bristol Plymouth will take a break. You are listening to 4D Sports Talk presentation. Excuse me, guys. We'll be back with more right after this. Today's 4D Sports Talk production is brought to you in part by Mediterranean Bar and Grill of Taunton. Visit them at medbarandgrill.com. By Soares Pumping. Simply the best at what they do. Visit them at soarespumping.com. By Frank Bedak Law Office. Visit them at bedaklaw.com. And by Physical Therapy U. Visit them at ptuclinic.com. And welcome back. You're watching 40 Sports Talk on the Facebook live stream covering the BP basketball game Bristol Plymouth Craftsman versus the North Ag the Rams. I am Lucas Vicente here with Dominic Damiano, Gene Zoom, and the man behind the camera, Alex Mayo. All right, here we go. Tonight, sorry you guys for, con for coming off, but tonight's going to be honestly a battle of the bigs. Even though the score is not starting right now, but the bigs are really fighting under the paint. And the coaches are really loving it, and they're even, so, um, even on the BP side, they're switching it up. So they can take out number three. I just don't know her name, but number three is yeah, the X Factor tonight. And that's all for me. All right, there's, there is uh, Gene Exum checking in. Approaching the four minute mark left, seven nothing Rams. As Leonard goes to her right, tries to work inside, she does. That was Takuda. There's a floater, won't go, and Bernardo's fouled. So she will go to the sh she will go to the shot clock. She will go to the charity stripe. Excuse me. 
and that would be on Faria. Her first team second. Exactly four minutes left in this first. First one hits the first one. Now, do you think they call it a charity strike? Is because for every free throw they make, they donate like a dollar or something like no, that? You figure it's an easiest shot in the NBA, easiest shot in basketball from the charity. You're not even more just putting the buck, uh, the ball up. Charity, just shooting it. You're not, no, you're not getting challenged by nobody. Nobody's on you, just shooting the ball. That's old school. Now Marshall brings it in. It's she also old school. No three point line existing. Yeah. Now on a break, trying to go this sole baseline. That's blocked. Actually got too far ahead of itself, covered by McGrath. And last touch by Soul of the Rams, so it will stay. Bristol Plymouth Ball is trying to get out of the run and get some get some good get a good rhythm going here. We're live here on Facebook. And there's Faria. Faria now. She's got to buy Dudak, and they switch it up. Now the biggest girl on the team's trying to go around her. She'll get over to McGrath. McGrath over to Marshall. Good play. A little give and go to Dutton. But slowing that down and stepping in front of that is Kiki Soul for the Lady Rams. 3.19 left in this first quarter. Brist on the break. McGrath has a clean shot. She works it back into Marshall, back into Dutton. Dutton shot. Doesn't fall. Rebound. Cudo, Cudio. Cudillo, excuse me, Cudillo trying to move. And there's Leonard. Leonard got it covered by Marshall. All the way over to Bernardo. Works inside. Cudillo shuts blocked by Dutton. And Marshall will bring it up. Under three minutes left. A little miscommunication by the girls. But McGrath is there to take Ferry is there to take it away. She's trying to work it out. The ball is almost taken out of hands. McGrath and stepping in front of that possible pass was Leonard. And Leonard gets it over to Soul. No, I'm sorry, gets it over to Cudillo. Now to Leonard in the BP end. Driving, stopping, Flutter and hits for two. And it's already a 10 0 game so far. It's looking very good for the Rams. Rams coming in this game 5 and 3. Where's the Plymouth 5 and 5? With it, that being said, there can only be one team that gets their sixth win of the season. And they're going to get Dutton for too many steps. He didn't dribble the ball. 205 officially left. Now checking in for the Lady Rams is number 23, Maloney. In number 35, DeLuca. That kind of rhymes with baloney. That was, that's, what you, that's what you are, yeah, baloney. <laughs> <laughs> now you're a good kid. All right, so here we go. And Cordillo is going to get too many steps. We're going to have another change of possession. 153 left. Is it me or have there been a lot of travel calls this game? There has been. Kids are getting excited about moving the ball, and they're not worried about that, dropping the ball. Now McGrath, they go full, soft full court press as they play man defense. And they're still in the game. Lost the ball, turned over. Bernardo now on the break. Now Cudillo, there's a good long shot by Maloney. Rebound, Cudillo who follows up for three. Actually, they counted as a two-pointer. Oh, for two, sorry. Yeah. Now, change of possession again. Cordillo trying to go around. We have her floater hook shot kind of won't go. On the follow-up, that won't go. On the ground, two girls fall over each other. There's a clean look for number 15. It won't go. That's Bernardo. Falls short. And we got another couple girls checking in. We'll give you their numbers. Number 30's in there. That's Kelly. So a couple fresh bodies for the Lady Rams. Low 11 on the reach. That's Kiki Soul. And that will be her first team third. Under a minute left. Twelve nothing Rams. 
Trying to give others McGrath. Oh on a steal. They're going to say she was on the line. All right, so here we go. And right in front of us is the senior captain Marshall over the Dutton now, the McGrath. McGrath just trying to get their team break the break the ice and get back in the game. There's Dutton. Dutton's going to drive baseline, use a frame, kick it back out, and she's going to be fouled. <laughs> On a hold. With 36 seconds left in the first quarter. On a break, there's McGrath. McGrath guarded by Dudak. They switch it up to Leonardo. She works it in and step in front of that is number 30. That's Kelly. That'll be an inbound pass right in the Rams end. McGrath will inbound it to Marshall. She'll drive, drive off the glass. They have a block on Leonard. That will be the team's fifth, her first team fifth. 23 seconds left. Not in, and we're gonna have some subs coming in as Sol checks in. And, Len, Le, excuse me, Leonard checks out. I said Leonard, I meant Leonard all there. And I said Leonard. I hope I did. Inside passes, Dutton for two, won't go. That's blocked in the middle by Malone. We're gonna have a jump ball still. And Kelly will fight for that ball. Let's see what's going to be. It will be Bristol Plymouth ball again in the Rams end. She's just trying to get it inside. And we're going to have a foul. That's going to be on 35 blue, I think. Let's see if we get the official number there. It's going to be in about past 35 blue it is. That's on DeLuca, her second team sixth. And we're gonna have a foul, and that will go to the line. Right now we have an old quarter to play and they are in trouble. Oh yes. And I refer to the Rams are in trouble with the, see that there, this is, thought misses the first one. Now, are we referring to the Rams or are we referring to the Craftsmen? The Rams as far as fouls. They have six, one more. You have a whole quarter to play. That'll put them in the penalty. And the assuming there will be a double bonus. Absolutely. Uh, hits up, misses the second one. And on the rebound is Saul. Trying to go around Ferry as she'll lose the ball. They're going to say it was last pushed out by a Craftsman with seven seconds left. On the inbound, there's Dudak. Dudak turns it around to Kelly. Won't go. Kelly gets another shot at. That falls short, and that's the quarter. After one quarter to play, your score. Rams 12, Craftsman's nothing. We'll be back with more right after this. Today's 40 Sports Talk production is brought to you in part by Mediterranean Bar and Grill of Taunton. Visit them at medbarandgrill.com. By Soares Pumping. Simply the best at what they do. Visit them at SoarsPumping.com. By Frank Bedak Law Office. Visit them at BedakLaw.com. And by Physical Therapy U. Set to see if they can actually make a crack into the score. Wow, more folk is still up in the arsenal, and I can't wait how well they have, but it might be an interesting bout. DP, not out. Let's talk. Oh, we're already back, not going to On the Facebook live stream. You're right, we still need an intro, though. No, you don't. Now when you come back. 
Oh, no. That's all right. You'll learn. That's all right. And, if, and in case you have... That sounded great. In case you know who we are, I am Lucas Vicente here with Dominic Damiano, Gene Exum on the sideline, and our cameraman, Alex Mayo. Good job with the intro. I was only kidding. You did a great job. <laughs> I had to make you laugh. A little lopsided game right now. This... There, uh, there is Soul. Soul all the way. There's a long three. Dudak won't go. Rebound. Soul kicks it back out to Dudak. She now she's going to drive a little jump shot. That's short. Rebound. Craftsman. There's Marshall. And Farrier trying to go around Dudak. Goes to her right. She stops trying to run a play. Trying to get someone to move. There's a little floater. That falls short. Rebound. Codio, Codio, now on a break. Here comes Malone. Malone, uh, Malone stops. And we're going to have up and down on the Lady Rims over change of possession. Just underway here in this first quarter. This second quarter, excuse me. They're still, still now moving. Still lost the ball. And in comes Malone. Malone stopping. Baseline jump shot, won't go. Rebound, Marshall. Marshall has been all over the boards for the Lady Craftsman. She's been there. Long shot up the still, a little bit too far. That'll fall short. And right there, there's Cordillo. She can try to feed the little jump. That's blocked by Marshall. Good job by Marshall. But Cordillo, we're going to have a jump ball. It will be Bristol Plymouth ball. As Mrs. Marshall is putting her hot tub on the sleeve, in comes Miller now. Liz Miller, she'll check in for the Lady Craftsman and still will take a break. That's the only change, first change here in the second quarter. Now Dutton, Dutton, all the way over the Farrier trying to go around Cadilla. Cordillo stops, now goes right, trying to go around Dudak, stops, now goes left, thinking about driving, stops, looks for somebody, gets over to Dutton, Dutton top of the key, she'll drive, here's your float, off the glass, won't go, on the rebound, there's Malone, Malone now, all the way over to Dudak, Dudak's going to drive after that pass, her float, it won't go, rebound, by Cordillo. By Cordillo. The girl was on the floor. That was Dudak. She's able to follow. And then hey, after she falls down, she gets up, grabs a composure, takes a jump shots, and hits. Exactly what I said about second chance points. Very important in this game. Absolutely. It's going to interrupt you guys. But I'm feeling this might be a runaway train. Well, I'm seeing a train running away. It might so. be a runaway train. And the coaches surely don't want it to be a runaway train, but they need to capitalize on the opportunities that they have. BP still has the energy, so I'm hoping to make a push before this half. And back to you guys. Whoa! Uh, the way it looks so far, North Aggie, his defense has been outplaying the offense of Verso Plymouth. Wouldn't that be correct, Dom? That would be very correct right now. It's and uh, the girls know it. They just have to get their rhythm in. And Norfolk Aggie, everything is working great for the Lady Rams here in this first half. Here's her first shot. Misses the first shot. Subs come in. Now Rose comes in. Marsha will... F she'll take a break. And it looks like Malone and Dudak will sit down. And coming in, I believe that is Leonard along with Bernardo. That looked like that was going to be a violation. That wasn't called. And in comes Rose, a new point guy. She's going to try to run it up, gets it over to Ferry. If I going to run, she'll stop. Over to Dutton. Dutton sees a shot, takes it. That's a little short. Still with a nice, Miller with a nice play to keep the ball in. But unfortunately, she passed it over to a Ram, and now the Rams are coming on the charge. Here comes Leonard. She's thinking about going baseline. Works it inside. There's a floater to the Cudio Dutton over the Ferrier. Ferrier's going to try to run it herself. She's going to lay it up. She's going to stop. Jump shot. Won't go. Dutton, and she's fouled. That's a brilliant pump fake by Farsha, even though she didn't quite get that shot to go. Yeah, Ferrier, nice try by that young lady. I think she pumped fake three defenders. And Sunday will be here for the Tri-County uh, Bristol Plymouth boys game. 
and Lucas Vicente will be at Stang High School as the rivalry continues in boys basketball as the Bishop Fan Shamrocks come to visit the Bishop Stang Warriors live. But we'll be getting our, play, our calls in from none other than Lucas Vicente. Um, about the call, me getting the calls, being correct. About what you said about Bishop Stang, eh, wrong. Bishop Stang's us. Mascots, they're the Spartans, not the Warriors. Oh, I thought they were the, the thank you. I'm glad you're here. That's Quill cool, Cassidy. Quill cool, Cassidy's yeah, the Warriors. That's right. There we go. That's why you're here. Thank God. There's McGrath. Tries to work inside. She's going to be fouled. We're going to have an offensive foul. And that's going to be on McGrath. Right now, they're in the bonus. Still a lot of time left in this uh, second, first half. Back and forth they go. Good pass from Bernardo. Turnaround shot. And it falls for Kelly. Now McGrath, she sees some lost it, lost it to Kelly. Ferry recovers that over to McGrath. McGrath sees three. Hits! Kaya McGrath. Now Leonard. And hits. That mid-range jumper has been a lost arc in basketball with a three-point game expanding. Now Dighton and Dutton inside can't finish. She's gonna try it again, and she fouled. That poor girl has done everything but put the basketball in the hoop. I can count five times the big center Dutton who worked that ball inside and it, it just comes right out of the hoop. Kind of like when you play basketball, right? Well, yeah, I'd say, yeah, but that's I, me. <laughs> but me, I, I can, I can, I, I'll hit the rim. I get a height restriction. Are you sure you actually hit the rim? Yeah, I've seen it once. All right, there's Dutton's second shot. But she couldn't go in the basket, much like the first one. Here it is, that falls short. And that couldn't even hit the rim. And we will have... Rams basketball. Yes, so you with 30, with, excuse me, three minutes, 18 seconds left in running in this first half of the 20 to 4. Nice move. Oh. Give and go pass inside from Callahan over to Cadillo. Cadillo's been everywhere in the paint on offense this entire game, whether it's offensive rebounds, getting the ball down low, or just doing whatever is needed. Rebound Rams. Oh. Callahan originally, and we're going to have a block and foul on Ferrier. That will be, should be her first. Team fourth. So Ferrier will take his seat. Dutton will take his seat. Miller's in, Still's in. Good group here. And there's Rose, good group. For the craftsman, there's a quick turnaround shot by Kelly and hits. Hey, come on, guys. You see that same shot? Pick it up, pick it up. And Marshall back in the game. Looking to run that play. Trying to get over. It's over to Raw. Rose, Rose back to Still. Still, she jumps up and essentially lost the ball. Last touched by the Rims. So with 13 seconds on the shot clock. Bristol Plymouth, that's a block and out of bounds by Kelly, I believe. All the way up, block, tipped, Codillo, Codillo, Codillo. Has Bernardo on. On the break, she tried to take it herself, couldn't finish. Excellent defense by the crash on approaching two minutes left in this first half. Marshall going to her left, looking, gets it all the way over to McGrath, has a clean look. Won't go, she definitely, definitely has the range for the shot. It's just not going in. No, they're not getting uh, this. Falling short. This has basically been the story of the Bristol Plymouth um, basketball 
Pats game so far. Absolutely, in this first half. They're doing everything right this entire game, but just, just not, not falling. Exactly correct. Thank you, son. All right, guys. One more two bit. Like, I assume 31 will be, like, the mass, the monster of this game. I mean, even though she's coming out, she's been, like, a big key actor. And BP needs to find an answer to stop her. Because she's passing, assisting, and getting boards. That's a hazard if you want to chop up this lead. It's all for me. Yeah, Dr. is going to be a key factor in this game, especially on Rodeo. I mean, Codio. Zaria Codio is the name. Another jump shot by Rose and hits. That's going to help the BP. Leach gets him down. Yeah, trying to get back in the lead. Trying to get back in the game. She's turned on by Kelly. Won't go. Kelly gets her a rebound and hits. I want to say most of the Norfolk no Aggies uh, points have been scored off second chance points. Yeah, good point. McGrath has a clean luck again. She can hit that shot. She's done it before. Miller, great job. Gets it out, and we're going to have a jump ball. The change of possession will be in favor of the Rams. 107 left in this first half. And as you can see, the score, 26-7. And here comes the point guard. There's Emily Leonard. She brings the, brings the ball up for the Lady Rams. Gets it inside. Turnaround by Callan, but she forgot to shoot it. Little bit too much pressure she had. That she was being defended well, so that'll be a change of possession. Under a minute left. And we'll go into the half. It's a two shot, two possession game now. If there's Dutton, Dutton, Ross, Rose. There's Marshall with a nice shot. That falls short. Rebound and a follow through. Dutton trying to do something under the hoop. And she's fouled. So with 40 seconds left, she's going to get a chance to work on her foul shooting. And Dutton will shoot too. There's the first one. Hits that one. Malone checks. Malone checks in. And it looks like uh, Callahan will check out. Step out. Not Callahan. I'm sorry. DeLuca checks out. There's Malone. Malone stopped, almost traveled the paper for inside. Gets it over to Bernardo. Bernardo starts back up to Malone. There's for three. Won't go. Rebound Dutton. 26 seconds left, and they're going to get a travel. With 25 seconds, we're going to have a change of possession in the, Bri in the Bristol Plymouth end. I do that all the time. In the Bristol Plymouth end with the shot clock off and 25 seconds on the game clock and the very big lead here right now for the Rams in this first half. Working inside, nice pass, and Bernardo lost the ball. There's Rose, she's gonna use her speed, she's gonna try to travel. And we're gonna have a block on Leonard, so she will go to the shot, she will go and shoot there in the double bonus, and she'll shoot two with 17 seconds left. And after that, that'll give the chance for the Rams to have another shot to put one in before the half's over. Here's Rose's first shot. She hits that one. Here's her second. Hits them both. 15 seconds, real fast, working it in, and they're going to call a foul. Nice effort by Bernardo trying to drive, so she'll go for two. And that will be on number 14. That'll be on McGrath. Her first team fifth. But it's not going to matter now because you only have 12 seconds left in this first half. Here's your first shot. And this is that one. Even means BP being in the double bonus. So BP will have a chance to go on another run here. Here's the second one. Hits that. Now with 12 seconds left, no shot clock. Nine, seven, six, Marshall, McGrath for three. Won't go. And that'll do it. 
with your score 27 to 10 North Aggie leading Bristol Plymouth in this uh, basketball game we'll be back with more right after this Brought to you in part by Mediterranean Bar and Grill of Taunton. Visit them at medbarandgrill.com. By Soares Pumping. Simply the best at what they do. Visit them at soarespumping.com. By Frank Bedak Law Office. Visit them at bedaklaw.com. And by Physical Therapy U. Visit them at ptuclinic.com. Back, you're watching Four Deep Sports Talk on the Facebook live stream. The Bristol Plymouth Craftsman taking on the North Fork Aggie Rams in Bristol Plymouth. I am Lucas Vicente here with Dominic Damiano, Gene Zoom, and Alex Mayo behind the camera. Dom, what are your takes on this game so far? Well, I'll tell you, BP has to get has to get uh, their rhythm going. Indeed, they do. So, uh, hopefully. Is he trying, if he's trying to say something, I don't think he realizes his mic is not on. Yeah. Poor Gene. Poor Gene's trying to tell us something. Hey, this means we cannot um, get yelled at for interrupting him. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We start the third quarter. Inbound pass. Oh, shoot. Hold on. I got to change it to third quarter. Yeah, fine. Now on the inbound. He needs to check his mic. It's not on. He's really talking. Oh, I wish we could. I wish we had another camera. We could zoom in on that. Yeah. All right. Can't there's go. Leonard. Instead, we just gotta keep doing our game. Yep. Over to Dudak. And they hit. I thought for a second you were gonna say Zippy Duda. No, nope, absolutely not. I swear right. to God. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Faria. McGrath inside, dungeon a drive, floater, won't go, misdirection. Oh, what a great hustle by Still. Out to Farrier, McGrath inside, the Dutton, Dutton back out to McGrath. McGrath will go to her right, stop, guarded by Bernardo. Goes to the top of the key, looks, looks, looks. And then there's four seconds, see if Marshall's gonna drive, she's gonna float it up, that's blocked. We're going to put one second on the shot clock. It is going to be an inbound pass and shoot the ball. That's all it is. And there it is. Won't go. Uh, shot clock violation will have a change of possession. Now that's what it's actually a shot clock violation, not like the last one. All right. And here comes Leonard bringing up 29-10 early in this third quarter. Cudio lost the ball. Nice job by Dutton Marshall. Has Ferry on a fast break. She has to get by Bernardo. She lays it up the glass. It's kind of like, sorry for cutting you guys off again. It's kind of like everybody out there Rudy's on the BP side because they came out with a whole different energy on, on, <laughs> on coming back to the bench. I'm really feeling the energy from the coaches and from the players that are sitting down as well. It's kind of like they've been jolted with some Gatorade or something. Well, that's all for me. Back to you guys in the booth. All right, thank you. Gene Exum reporting from the sideline. On a follow-up, that's a good deal. We had yeah, Mike on that time. Dudak and Stepper. Yeah, he did, thank God. Poor guy. <laughs> well, he probably had some good information to say. There's Ferry going to her left, thinking about driving, trying to go Bernardo. Bernardo. Now she'll float it up. That's partially blocked. That and follows. In and out, won't go. Ferry, a fall away. That's blocked. Codillo now has the ball on the rebound for the Lady Rams, and here comes Leonard bringing the ball up. Leonard all the way over the Dudak. Dudak, Leonard. If I can manage to, from over there, read your, read your website so I can determine whether you're speaking or not, I think I'll be just fine doing the sideline. 
Yeah, you just get to time it right. That's all. You'll learn it. Now, you think when David Aldridge does it, he um, times it right, or do you think he just yeah, like made a piece? He can say, yeah. We <laughs> remember, we're a, we're a small nonprofit. <laughs> we don't have that technology yet. <laughs> I wish we did. Me too. Farrier. Marshall has a nice look. She'll take a shot. Hits for three. <laughs> Maya Marshall. I believe that's their first three pointer of the game. Their yeah, second. Before. Oh, the second? Yep. Mm. Rath hits the other one. Now Leonard stops, tries to work inside. There's a hook shot. In and out, won't go. Oh, nice play by, by Still saving the ball. But she gets it out over to Leonard. Leonard on the side for Soul, won't go. Cordillo works it back into Soul. And she's going to get charged. Got had nothing else to do. Didn't want to give her a free, a free look. So Soul will go to the charity stripe. Officially 4.52 left in this first quarter, third quarter and a 29 to 13 Rams lead. Misses the first. There's the second, hits the second, 30-13. Bristol. That's kind of similar if you think about it. 30-13. Yep, that's true. There's Faria. Meanwhile, we see North Ag going in like a 3-2 zone right now. Marshall has another look. That's short. Covered by Cordillo. And we're going to have a block on Marshall. Uh, that will be the team third in her first. Now Leonard bringing the ball up, goes left, gets it over to Dudak, giving back and forth they go, she goes right, she sees Bernardo, gets it over on the other side, that's Dudak, there's a long shot, won't go, rebound still for Bristol Plymouth. Farrier bringing the ball up, Farrier, top of the key again, stop there in front of Bernardo, trying to make a play, works from the Dutton, Dutton works, stops, over to Still, Still's going to try to move, there's a flow that's blocked, McGrath gets a nice rebound, works her way back out, all the way over to Marshall, Marshall, to Farrier, Farrier's going to try to drive, kicks over to McGrath, McGrath sees a shot, a little too much, that's long, Marshall on the rebound, gets it over to Dutton, one second, and we're going to have a shot clock violation. And a change of possession. Now with 3.47 left in this third quarter. And there's Leonard. That Bernardo, Leonard all the way over to Dudak. Marshall almost intercepted that. She did get a tip because it went out of bounds. So it'll stay Rams ball in the BP end. Again, 3.37 left, 19 seconds left in the shot clock. She's going to drive, floater off the glass, won't go. Rebound, Bristol Plymouth. And Marshall will bring the ball up. Faria. Looking around, trying to set up the offense. Over to McGrath. Oh, and a little bit miscommunication. We'll have a change of possession. And in comes Leonard. Emily Leonard bringing the ball up for the Lady Rams. Works it inside the soul. Hook shot, and she's fouled. So go to the line and shoot a couple. Let's see who they call that on. It's going to be either on Marshall or they're going to call that on Stella. Her first team fourth. Here's her first shot. This is the first shot. Couple subs come in and comes Malone. The foul was on Still, by the way. On Still, that's what I said. Still's first. Is it Still team. or uh, No, I said Still. Marshall's fourth. I, th I thought you said Still or Marshall. Yeah, but then I said it was Still. Oh. That's all right. Hits the second. That's a violation. Doesn't matter if it goes in. 31 13. Now, how is it a violation if it's on the line? Before the line was shot. Went over the line before the ball was shot. Oh, all right. Because I because when it's on the release in high, in high school and or in any league in general. It, it went way before way before the ball was shot. All right, we'll have another change, and Cordillo will check out, and it looks like Kelly will check in. Marshall. 
Tries to get inside the Dutton. They're going to use her, her height. That's blocked by Saul, covered by... Uh, oh. They're going to call that on her fifth. Are they going to call? Yep, they're going to call that on still her second team fifth. BMP getting in the early foul trouble here. The whole foul situation this game, is, in this half, is completely different from the first half. We saw how uh, the Ag Rams were uh, in a bit of foul trouble throughout the first half. In the second half, they haven't committed a single foul, and the foul trouble has clearly gone in the Bristol Point direction. Absolutely. That next uh, foul, uh, that will foul be on so her first team, thir her third team first. Oops, looks like I spoke too soon. It's all right. And it looks like that Luca will check in and Saul will take a seat. So it will be, it will be Malone, DeLuca, and there's McGrath now. The back and play. Marshall has a nice look. That's off. Rebound. The smallest girl on the team goes up for the shot, I think. Now that was still. And she and she's fouled. That will be on DeLuca. Her third, team second. 206 left in this third quarter. Here's the first. Falls short. Just just short, I should say. There's their second shot, hits that one. Well, yeah. team, my bad. Um, no worries. Nice rebound by the Lady Crash, and as McGrath brings it up. That and turnaround shot won't go. Rebound Malone for the Lady Rams. She'll stop, go to her right now. Malone looking, looking. Oh, all the way with Bernardo, works inside. Nice pass, won't go. Rebound, Bristol Plymouth. And Marshall brings it back. Approaching 120 left, all the way over to Rose. Rose now in the game to, Mal to Marshall, to Dutton. Dutton lost the ball, that's a turnover. Gets it over to Leonard, Leonard thinking about driving. Goes to her right, covered by Rose, stops, bump pass. Bernardo, there's a shot by Kelly that's hit, that hits. A minute left in the third quarter. And Marshall brings it up. BP still trying to find their rhythm. Over to Rose, a little miscommunication. She gets it, she gets the pass, now she stops. Oh, and she didn't know, she actually gave it to Bernardo. She was trying to hit Dutton. Bernardo stepped into play, made a great play on the turnover. Now let her drive baseline, she fouled. So, Leonard will shoot a couple. That will be on. As Coach Lisa Garrett uh, emphasized, defense was going to be an important factor of, of how this game has gone on, and she has certainly not been wrong about that. Her defense has been hit really good so far, to say the least. She hits the second one, hits that one. And to say the most, uh, the execution on offense off second chance points has been excellent, and it's why they have gotten this big lead. All right, so here comes Marshall with another update. Foul trouble has been like a problem as well for the BP end of things because they're on the sixth foul and it's pretty much it besides number 31 causing a havoc in the paint they need to or yeah they just need to just not foul that as much as they're doing right now but on the good end, they still, they still have their spirit and they're still keeping their heads up. And back to you guys. All right, thank you, Gene Eggs. And we'll take a break. We'll be back with the fourth quarter right after this.
Alright, welcome back. You are watching 40 Sports Talk on the live stream covering Bristol Plymouth Classroom Basketball versus the North Agricultural Rams. I am Lucas Vicente here at Dominic Damiano, Gene Xun on the sideline, and Alex Mayo. Unfortunately, no sports master today. Now, Dom, your insight on the fourth quarter. What's going to be the most important thing happening in this quarter for Bristol Plymouth to make this comeback? Well, so I don't know what you I don't know. I'm not sure what you saw, but I'm seeing uh, execution-wise, they're, they're hurting themselves. Yeah. They're just not finishing. 14 um, points through three quarters, it's just not going to get it done. The offensive execution has to be much better this quarter. Granado, a long three, won't go. And there's Malone from the base, there's from the uh, baseline and hits. 39-14 Rams, and Marshall brings the ball up. Inside, the ball is blocked, and Malone will bring it up. She's moving. She'll try to finish, and we're going to have a travel. Change of possession as both girls go down hard. Officially just underway here in the fourth quarter. McGrath for three, won't go. Rebound still for Bristol Plummer. She'll take a baseline shot and she's fouled. And she'll go to the charity stripe and try to hit a couple. Now in, let me see. Hits the first. Trying to give them an update on uh, who's in for the Rams right now. That is DeLuca, Hi. Kelly, Malone, Bernardo, and Leonard. No, I'm sorry, De, um, Dudak. Malone from Dudak works inside. There's a turnaround shot up the glass and in for Kelly for two. And we have Faria, Marshall, Rose, still and Miller in for the Lady Craftsman. Friday trying to move, gets it over to Rose. Rose works it inside, still wasn't, she got caught off guard, didn't see the pass coming. Well, and on a turnaround and change of possession, it comes Malone unassisted, oh, and this, I should say an assist off the glass and in. Faria inside the still, still gonna try to drive her floater off the glass, won't go. And getting that ball is Kelly offensively. And Dudak will bring it up. Dudak stops. Goes left, goes right around fashion. Try to drive her floater, won't go. Rebound, Kelly, that won't go. Malone will start it up again. Dudak, baseline, that's short. And they're gonna say his last touch. By Bristol Plymouth, so Malone will inbound the pass. In the Bristol Plymouth end. Inside, nice block by Miller as Bernardo tried to finish. Rebound Rose, long pass to Faria. It's Callahan trying to go on Cal, little, a little pa pass over to still can't finish. Good defensive play out there by, uh, by Acosta. Absolutely, right, Don? Absolutely. Yep, there's a block. Uh, we're going to have a jump ball. Although that, I think that was a clean block, personally. I don't think that was a jump ball. Uh, I, I tend to agree. 10 2. That was a good, yep, no, you're right. right. On yeah. the break in the Norfolk end. Still thinking about driving. She does drive. Rex, we're going to have a jump ball again. Change of possession. Poor. Kelly, that poor girl is all bang, that poor girl's all banged up. And Dudak bringing it up. Dudak bounce pass for Bernardo. Nice block by Rose out of bounds. But it will stay Aggie ball 
in the BPN with 5.30, 5 minutes, 30 seconds left. Callahan, Callahan over to Kelly. Floater won't go. Rebound, Marshall. Marshall's going to try to drive it. So she takes it by herself. She goes baseline up the glass. A little bit too hard. Can't finish. Rose is there to pick up the rebound. Works it over to Miller. Marshall. Marshall back over to Rose. Lost the ball. Nice save by Miller. Over to Marshall. Baseline jumper. Won't go. We're going to have a push on Callahan. That will be her second team fourth. 5.05 left in the game. And an inbound pass in the Aggie end. There's Miller. She sees three. There's a shot that's short. Masha picks up. Faria steps back. She hits a jumper. That won't go. Rebound Bernardo for the Rams. In come the Rams. Nice handles there by Bernardo going around two players. Gets it all the way over to Dudak. Dudak thinking about playing back to Bernardo. Top of the key. Goes around Rose. Goes to her right. Stop the ball. They're going to get it for Carey. And we'll have a change of possession. With 441 left in this game. And a very big lead for the Lady Rams. Sure is. Now inside, still lost the ball, gets up the Ferry Ferry jump shot. That's off. Rebound, Dudak. Dudak lost the ball for a minute. And she tried to get it over to uh, Costa. A little miscommunication on that pass. It will be Craftsman ball in the Norfolk Aggie, and there's Marshall. Marshall. Farrier. Marshall for three. Won't go. Rebound. Gets her own rebound. Fall up, and she fouled. So Marshall will go to the line with 4.03 left in this game. And that foul will, will, the foul will be on Costa, her first team fifth. 4.03 left in the game. And Marshall will go to the charity stripe for a couple. Misses the first. Here's the second. Hits that one. And Dudak running the offense here for the Lady Rams. He's thinking about driving all the way by herself. Gets to Bernardo. Bernardo back to Dudak. Works inside. That was Kelly back to Bernardo. That drop to him won't go. Cal Callahan cleans that up off the glass and banks it off the banks it in. And now Faria. Faria bringing it up. Stop, stops. Over to Marshall. Marshall. She had a look, she stopped. Faria. Now out to Rose with a long shot. That won't go. Loose ball, still there on the rebound. They're saying that ball's about uh, Miller gets in there, tries to grab the ball. And in comes Dudak. Dudak, top of the key, gets it low, little floater by Costa, won't go, rebound. And we'll have a foul. Uh, we'll have a travel on Kelly as she tried to lift the shot, Joe, but she backed up. So we'll check back in, and out comes Kelly. Approaching the three-minute mark in the game. And Fario bring the ball up. Looking at Saul, trying to work it around Marshall now. Marshall thinking three. Works it over to Miller. Miller, clean look for Rose. Her shot's off. Rebound. Rebound, um, we have one and one now. Foul on still, her fourth team seventh, so on the one and one now. Oh boy. It's the first, she'll take another shot. Unfortunately for BP, time is not on their side at all. 
No, unfortunately, never really got there. There was hits the second. They just, the rhythm on offense, it just was not there at all. Unfortunately, correct. You're right. Good. That's why you are the color guy. Good job. <laughs> no, I'm the color guy because I have to determine what color is this system. Well, guys, I feel like they're putting the last nails into the coffin with this one. Norfolk was just a handful. We thought of foul trouble and the missed opportunities. BP still has their head still in this game, but it's looking like a runaway train, guys. And back to you guys in the booth. All right, thank you, June Exit, checking in, doing a great job like always. All your interns do a great job. They do for the most part when they listen. And there's a steal. And there's Rose, you're going to get her for the travel. I don't agree with that call. I felt like a, that was a nice fast break. We right. should just let, let the ball play. And back to you guys in the booth. <laughs> Great job, Gene. Inside, Rose trying to make a play. Tried to get the ball out of Costas. He's inside to Callahan. That won't go. Marshall. Maya Marshall going to try to drive. She might try to take this all herself. Goes on one player. Off the glass. And in. Now Dudak. And she's going to get caught for all the travel. Oh, whoops. I actually done for it. changed. Uh, to play on North, North Island because I'm used to them scoring. But uh, a good basket by our BP. On that possession. Farrier, Rose, still back to Farrier, bounce pass. Marshall for three. Won't go, rebound. Rose, again, now Farrier will drive. A little jump shot. That won't go. Marshall with the rebound. Marshall thinking about driving on a floater off the glass. Won't go. Good, trying to get her own rebound. She goes up, no call. Rebound. And we're going to have a foul. That's going to be, I believe, on still. One and one. It will be on Marsha. Her second team eighth. Misses that. Oh. She hits that one. Got the lucky bounce. Well. She got the right bounce. Did what she had to do to get it in. Now I have a penalty on the floor. That will be a violating violation. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Good call by you, young man. And Saul will take a seat, and it looks like Kelly came back into the game. She did. Under a minute left in the game. Marsha sees it, takes it, hits it. But at least our BP won't go down this game completely silent. Yeah, they're trying. It's a little late with their rush, getting it all together. There's a turnaround shot. I think that was Callahan. He's going to have a foul on the floor. And that will be on Costa. So that will put Bristol Plymouth on the charity swipe, charity stripe with a one and one possession. With a one and one shot. It will be Liz Miller. She'll take one. She makes one. She hits the second one. This is that. This is the first one on the rebound. Gets her own rebound. Follows through, and she fouled. Oh, she got popped in the eye too. Let's see, see it blinking a little bit. Mm -hmm. and, so she'll go to Charity Stripe and hit a couple. 
misses the sec first one, excuse me. And misses the second one, unfortunately. Rebound, Callahan. Callahan just trying to get out. They're going to say she pivoted out of bounds, so we'll have a change of possession. With the shot clock turned off. And this is the last clock. This could be the last shot of the game. Farrier for three. Won't go. Rebound. Miller gets up. Lost the ball. Marshall trying to finish. And we're going to have a foul. Marshall will go to the line for a couple. So 24-48 is the score right now with 14 seconds left in this game. Hopefully she makes the next one. Makes the, the second one. Yeah, good call. And I, th and I think Norfolk's just going to waste it, waste the rest of this clock right here. I mean, I don't see why they win it. They have to just let it run out probably. That's all she has to do and that'll do it. With your final score, make sure you get the final up there, right? The final, yeah. Like, as in, like, a complete opposite of first, right? Or beginning. You are learning. That's what I like about my interns. They are learning. With your score, Norfolk Aggie Rams. Oh, this was a nice matchup, you guys. Norfolk really came out and showed out and took control of a, a commanding lead. BP still had the smoke and spice, but we couldn't do anything nice with it. And then back to you guys in the booth. Thank uh, you, thank you, Gene Exum. I have my thoughts. You want to go first? I, my thought is no, North. At, uh, the Rams completely dominated this game. Their defense was great. The second chance points kept going for rebounds. They kept taking care of the ball, and that's what's going to win in the end. That's what's going to win games. Yeah, absolutely. For, um, excuse me, for uh, Gene Exum, Alex, Alex May on the camera, Lucas Vicente, I'm Dominic Damiano. We hope you enjoyed this broadcast of 4 Deep Sports Talk as we gave you the Norfolk Aggie Rams and the Bristol Plymouth Lady Crafts on the course. Let's go one more time. Bristol, Norfolk Aggie 48, they improved to 6 and 3. Bristol Plymouth 25, they'll fall to 5 and 6 in the young season. We will catch you next time. Everyone have a fantastic night. This has been a presentation of 4Deep Sports Talk, where high school and youth athletics come first.